Here we are, beautiful fall day. Undoubtedly, my favorite fight time of the year, Jason. Jason Freed, I'm Toby Kovalyevog. This is show eight of the Guide Life. We're here on a, a lake. We're off of Leech Lake today. A little bit. We're uh, enjoying a beautiful day. It's like 45, 50 degrees. The Vikings are gonna be on in a little bit. We got beautiful yellow in the trees. We're thinking about deer hunting. We were sharing trail camera pictures this morning. Right. Yes. So much going on, but the walleyes are still chomping. And, and you don't have to have all the technology right now. So we're hoping to get out here on this lake today, do some rigging, old school, 2D sonar, working brake lines, catching a few fish. Yeah, gonna drown a few chubs, listen to the bikes. More so, give our uh, recap of the year. I mean, this is kind of the swan song of the uh, fishing season. And uh, as we get into the, the winter time now and start dreaming about open water, we're gonna go ahead and give a good recap of uh, what the LOA season was all about in 2023. And as you're watching this show, please like, comment our YouTube channel, but maybe comment on what would you like to see next year? Because as the show airs, We'll have plenty of time to start planning for 2024, The Guide Life, and bring you what you want to see. Guiding, while to some people on the outside it might seem like a glamorous thing, it's a lot of work. But every time somebody steps into my boat for a guide trip, it's it's their trip. This is their trip. And oh spending the day gosh, on the water with people, it's, just, it's really a dream come true. It's just a truly special experience. Setting the hook, netting the fish, high-fiving people, and that's truly the passion. Yeah. What drives me is fishing different species and making memories with people. It's, it's a phenomenal thing. And that's what keeps me coming back. That's what fuels my fire for guiding. Every day is something new, and seeing the smiles on people's faces when they catch that personal best makes it all worthwhile. And I love watching kids get addicted to uh, fishing. We are a family. Between all of us, we spend countless hours on the water. And at the end of the day, it's about making sure that the people that were in your boat learned something and enjoyed that experience and made some memories along the way. 31 inches, baby! Woo -hoo -hoo. Chris, you're up. Am I going to get this one, Nick? Get him. There you go. Beautiful fish. Oh, boy. One of my faves. That's a little nicer one. Woo! Yeah! There we go, buddy. Right away! What a beautiful leech lake musky in those spots. It's not a super tender. Nice fish, buddy. Thanks. That's a good one. Oh, bro! Oh, there we go! There we go. First nice fish of the day. Yeah, on top of these fish, like you said. Here he comes, here he comes. Come on. <laughs> yeah! That is how you catch the leech like you're in Yeah! <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. We wanted to go catch a big one. Let's pick it. Nice. Yeah! <laughs> 37. Eight minutes to go. Woo! The Guide Life with Leisure Outdoor Adventures is brought to you by these great partners. Live bait rigging, key to success is obviously live bait. This time of year, walleyes, which we are targeting, are looking to fatten up and they like some of the, the bigger baits. Jason's gonna use a bigger creek chub. I'm gonna use a regular red tail chub, both chubs. These, uh, <coughs> these minnows work, work well when rigging. And as you probably know, and those of you who followed us before, what we like about this is live bait rigging is with a sensitive rod and live bait rigging, you can feel these minnows actually get nervous before they get bit. That one was scummy, Toby. I don't know if you saw that. That scum on it. Not that lively of live bait? No. So just traditional fishing, slip sinker, three eighths ounce weight, number two odd hook. Hook them right through the upper lip. Find the bottom below the boat. Trust your 2D sonar. Drag it right through. Think the Vikings are gonna win today? They don't turn the ball over four times in the first four possessions. Should ask Toby how his lumberjacks did on Friday night against the Warriors. 
It didn't turn out very well for them. Their best 12 guys were injured. <laughs> <laughs> They're all training for hockey. Yeah. Now, the best thing is about live baiting with big chubs is they're like tattletales. They're down there and they tell you when there's a fish around. Nightcrawler doesn't do that. Leech doesn't do that. But a big creek chub or big red tail, they're like down there scouting for you. Swimming around, looking for walleyes. And then when they get scared, you know there's one that's about ready to chow it. That's the best part about rigging chubs, especially this time of year. And you get to use big ones. These things are on the Hopefully it'll be on the feed bag here a little bit. Do you remember that show one? We were talking, we we're on Leech Lake. It's, it was basically opener. It was Monday after opener. And we're up in some weeds, typical shallow water, jigging a shiner. And Murph breaks out this new trick that I never knew of. Maybe you did, but. Murph doesn't give, a, Murph doesn't give many no, secrets away. No, I happened to catch him in the act. He had a bite and he like, oh, I had a bite and he dropped it. And he just opened his bail and dropped it right back down and set the hook. It was a pretty good tip he gave on that that episode, probably my highlight of that one. It was just, you know, we went back to back, I believe it was back to back really catches. Cool. Nice job, Murph. So I noticed with that fish, and I noticed, I noticed you were feeling it, you were kind of jigging it, you dropped your rod, and like maybe the fish dropped it? I don't know, but what did, what did, uh, what like did you the, do there to coax like, that one? I like to hold them, and then sometimes I'll like, I'll pop it this just one? to make it, get that one more, to make it, no, to give you that second hit, just so you don't, so you don't choke. So you don't choke. Does it help? But every once in a while I do choke. Does it, does it help to talk to him? Sometimes I talk to him. <laughs> no, I saw that. And it, it, did it drop it once or yep, twice too? It dropped it. It dropped, dropped it. it. So one thing I like to do is if also, I'm jigging, all of a sudden you feel it drop. Don't just like kind of like try to get it to feel again. Just drop your tip. Let that jig just lay on the bottom. And they'll, I ain't kidding, 90% of the time, they'll pick that thing back up. Because if they first initially hit it, and all of a sudden they drop it, but all of a sudden that minnow's laying there, oh, I crippled it. This will be even easier. Sure. Come there and grab it, and then he's on. They're predators, right? So There's another one. It's possible. Yep. Perfect. Something like that. Ooh. Gator? No, it's all right. Off. Another nice eater. <laughs> so something like that, just drop the tip and give it a jig and catch <laughs> yeah, another just, one, huh? <laughs> it was that quick. Another one. Good job. Let's do it again. Who's gonna top that? You got a bite, Jay. <laughs> Hooked up. It's amazing. I'm looking at the 2D sonar like old school, right below them, uh, right below the boat. I just told Joe, our camera guy, that right on him, I'm going to get one of those. But like, I, like we were talking about with Murph, just drop that back down in his face. Watch the, oh, that could be about like a 19 inch, I think. I'm going to get to the keep old one. Stew pot. Maybe if we can get him in. There he is right there. Yep. Here we go. A little dinner. I'll get the old clam out of your way here. Yeah, no kidding. Beauty of that, just kind of a no-brainer fishing. Watch your 2D sonar. Go over them, feel that middle get a little nervous. Thump, gets heavy. Dinner, perfect 18 incher for the box. Okay. Pro tip, I'll put water your in your line any day. What's that? So I'll be your net man any day. <laughs> You take your slip sinker, drop it below the boat, and if you look down here, we're dragging it right down there on the bottom. And I'm actually holding my sinker just off the bottom, about a foot or so. Those fish come up, feed up to it, get the bite. That's your traditional fishing. You know, we don't do a whole lot of that 2D sonar anymore, Jay. You know, we get uh, show one, jigging a minnow. You know, that's traditional, we're rigging, but even there we did some, we just did a spotting with the, with the sonar. You know, there's times during the show when they had four guys in the front of the boat looking at the, fighting over my forward facing sonar. You know, and then, and then in show two, and two, we're up in Vermilion, but then we started doing some forward facing stuff too. Not very often we get to use just 2D sonar. So it's kind of fun to get out here and do that. It proves that it still works. 
you just got to do it. You know, we're working around. Maybe it took us a little bit longer to find the fish, but we're driving around 2D sonar, trusting your electronics once you find them. With mapping, of course, you can see where we're on with the structure here. Little saddle. There's a few fish laying down there, and it works. Yeah, you're right, Tobes. I mean, that's kind of the fun thing is just the diversity we have as a guide service being not only Leech, Mille Lacs, Brand Lakes, but also Vermilion. You know, in episode two, we spent our time up on Vermilion and uh, everybody got to know our new fishing guide, Justin Cromie. Yeah. But you also got to see what I think is my, my favorite part about being over on Lake Vermilion is just the diversity of the fishery, uh, the lake. Obviously, we focused on catching walleyes that day, but I mean, Vermilion is a lot like other lakes, but with it being a Canadian Shield Lake and got phenomenal bass fishing, great walleye fishing. There's still giant muskies in there. You know, I mean, so it's kind of one of those places where, you know, I think we're able to, as a guide service, provide kind of a unique experience in the sense that we can really cater to what people are looking for, you know, for a fishing trip or a vacation. And so, you know, being whether it's, you know, central Minnesota and the lakes around here and, uh, you know, the amenities we have in these areas or kind of that no up north, Canadian feel, you can come over to Lake Vermilion and fish with us. So, I mean, that's kind of a, a unique thing about our guide service as we expand and grow. And, uh, you know, like I said, Lake Vermilion's got a lot to offer. And as you saw in episode two, it's got some pretty darn good walleye fishing in it. So my favorite part of that show, Jason, was the very end. Not only, I think you caught one or for sure, for sure one, maybe two big fish at the end of that show. How big was that big one that Justin got? Well, that, uh, that was the biggest a, one in the end. That yeah, was that was the fun part about filming that show this year was you know, we uh, started off with a one over 26, like in the first 10 minutes, and then proceeded to catch a bunch of, you know, just walleyes for shore lunch, which you saw at the very end of the episode. It was an awesome shore lunch. But then to finish the show, I set the hook into one that was, you know, 25-ish, somewhere in there. And then we followed it up five minutes later, and Justin drops his bobber right on top of a one that was probably 28, 28 and a half. So, I mean, that's... Talk about the way to cap off a show. That's always the pressure when you film these things. You always want to end with a great one, and uh, we were able to throw one in the net there. And and uh, uh, yeah, and plus Justin got to be big fish Justin that day. So I kicked his butt <laughs> catching fish, but he caught all the big ones except for the one I got. But that's what it's all about: catching big fish when you get the opportunity. This is a toad, oh, big one, nice and easy. Got him! Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh man. Suspended one. That is a toad. <laughs> we are going to keep that one in the water. That thing came up fast. Yeah. Literally we're in 10 feet of water. That thing was about six feet down. Mm -hmm. Justin and I both noticed it. Justin put the, the uh, hammer down. first. That a boy, <laughs> man. That is awesome. Like, yep. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in here, Justin. Get out no. here. This is your fish, my man. <laughs> that is awesome. Back. Man, I tell you what, Lake Vermilion Gold. It doesn't get much better. Like, that's what it's all about. You mm -hmm. get a chance to catch these. People come up here for a week. All right, if they get a chance to put their net under one of these, and we can help them with that because we're guides out here. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, come on up, enjoy Lake Vermilion. We got resorts. We got beautiful scenery. We got beautiful Lake Vermilion walleyes. A little bit of everything up here, and you're gonna love it. Come on up and come fishing with us. Leisure Outdoor Adventures, Lake Vermilion. Awesome. Fish where the fish are. That part ain't rocket science. In terms of walleye production, Leech Lake is best. 
Trapper's Landing Lodge on the south shore of Leech Lake has the finest lodging on the entire lake. With renowned angling expert Josh Pullivant managing the property, Trapper's Landing is the place to be. Opening weekend and all season long. Fish where the fish are. Stay at Trapper's. Call for reservations 218-836-2500. Stop into Ray's Sport and Marine today to check out our remaining 2022 in-stock inventory or place your 2023 order with guaranteed price lock until September 1st. After September 1st, prices are subject to change, so now is the time to reserve your new boat. From tillers to side councils and full windshield models, we sell them all. Our sales and service team is here to help you get on the water. Ray's Sport and Marine, 896 Northeast 1st Street, Grand Rapids, Minnesota. That's a winner. It's on the large size of red tail. And again, fall fishing, big bait. It's like, you know, I'm really not that hungry, but mama just pulls that cake out of the oven or pie and after Thanksgiving, you just can't help yourself. And that's what's going on with a big red tail or a big minnow this time of year. You know, it's fun, we're rigging now, but you know, in, the, in our next episodes this year, it was really cool, and this has been happening a lot in tournament fishing, whether it's bobber fishing or, or throwing plastics, jigs and minnows, but there's so much suspended bite. You know, and for years, and I know it happened up in Vermilion at the end of the year, but for, for years, come August, you know, people are out pulling lead core, which is still a tactic up on, on Vermilion. Um, but the tournaments nowadays, walleye tournaments, like guys are using forward-facing sonar, and it really brings up the question is, you know, do we need to change our limits? Because the way we guide too, you know, we just find a school of fish and you hammer on them with, with uh, bobbers and whatnot. But um, I thought I had a bite there. But with forward-facing sonar in show two and even some in three, you know, we're chasing fish out in the middle of the basin that otherwise wouldn't be wouldn't be even discovered before you know people trolled for muskies and people pulled lead core for walleyes but as far as targeting an individual fish in deep water forward facing or facing sonar has certainly changed that game and it's legal people are doing it and we've taken advantage of it and kind of figured it out but favorite part of show number three is when nick miltimore you know we forward facing sonar used active target saw a big walleye suspended and uh threw the champ swimmer and boom Whoa. caught that big walleye and you're a little right of them there you're coming He's coming. Got him? Yep. Nice. That was cool. I could see that fish eat. Feel like a decent walleye? Yeah, it feels like a good one. Think we got a big enough net? I hope so. So we're just out here cruising around, trying to feel in a few fish. Artificials. There he is, the man working his jig perfectly. That's a nice fish, Nick. That's a good one. Nice. Hope we get him in. Uh, artificial baits, summer fishing. This is cool to get this in and kind of talk about what we're doing here. It's gonna be a good one, Toby. Well, that's what kind of the, that's what we're hoping for. A little different than uh, just slipping a bobber out in front of him and, geez, what do you got? I don't know. We've had a little yeah. bit of diversity this morning. I messed up something on my power settings on my graph and Fish didn't comes. have a, a good one. Oh well, yeah, that's a good start to our there show. <laughs> nice job. Hey, good one. Artificial baits. Midsummer, take a little break from throwing corks and catching just absolute sumos of walleye. Snicky boy. Artificial bait. You can totally see that fish come up and eat. Board facing sonar is, uh, how can I help you? I got it right here. That's a beautiful fish. We might want to get a little measurement of that thing. I'll get this out a little bit. Um, throw on the quick, just get a quick, we'll make this quick and 28 inch or so. Yeah, right around 28, 28 Yeah, half. beautiful start to our day. Yeah, we'll take that, huh? Talk about that fish real quick and we'll let it go, but uh, what well, did we do, what did we see? Well, we're driving around, we see them on forward facing sonar and uh, just cast out at them in open water and work a, a plastic rake back to them right over the top of them, watch them come up and, and move on it. That's crazy, you know, see a few fish, make a few casts, they all aren't moving, Right. they all aren't eating. Yeah, we've There's cast several fish here. that haven't done anything. Let's get them away, put them back, and uh, 
Uh, does vermilion have zebra mussels? It does not, and I I don't know if it's true, but vermilion has tannonite in the water. That's why it gives stain. it a stain. Yep. And I've been told, maybe it's just a wise tale, that the zebes would have a hard time surviving in that lake because of the tannonite in the water. Not enough algae. Yep. To filter. That might make sense. I'm not a biologist, so don't quote me on that. Well, I think that's part of the reason why these lakes are changing and we've, we're taking advantage of forward-facing sonar, obviously with the water clarity. Um, these lakes are clearing up. So lake like Leech Lake, Winnie, Cass Lake, uh, Gull Lake down in the Brainerd area, these lakes that didn't have uh, zebra mussels before, now they do, the water's clear, the weeds are changing, crayfish, just the whole, the biology of the lakes are changing. And these fish, we're 2D sonar fishing today, live bait rigging traditionally, but we're doing so because it's fall of the year and the fish are out a little deeper. Whereas, you know, fishing opener through June, July, these fish are up in six, eight feet of water. And if you don't have wind, it's really hard to drag over the fish, you know. With wind, you can long line a crawler and a leech on Leech Lake, but when it's flat, calm, and sunny, good luck getting a big fish, a big boat over over those fish, right? And and uh, I just think that zebra mussel thing, the you know, the fish obviously are still in the lake, and the fishing, you could say, is as good as it's ever been. It's just changed, and the only way, not the only way, with side, side imaging, you can certainly find fish too and throw bobbers, but as we're finding out, that forward-facing sonar, you can stay 60, 80 feet, away, 80 feet away from the fish, and that's how you can catch them, and or over deep water, right? Whether you're bass fishing or largemouth fishing, and in show three, that's where we had Jace Peterson. We were chasing bass out over suspended, suspended water, both largemouth and smallies, and that was one of my favorite bites of that, that the end of that show. We got a, we were chasing with forward facing sonar bass over deep water, but they were, they were surfacing and it was, it was with the top water that we actually got that amazing bite at the very end to close the show. Rinsters hooked up. Looks like a smallie. The elusive small Look at them all bass. chasing them. Look at them, Look at them all chasing them. them. Get the head. We got a smallie. There was like a school or five or six of them. It was crazy. I don't know if the camera picked that up or not. We saw them surfacing up here. We've been talking about this. We've been chasing it. And it's a nice smallie. Go ahead and grab him, Jim. If you can, careful of that hook. The elusive smallmouth. This lake doesn't have a huge population of big ones, but there are some big ones. Look at that one. It's a nice, nice smallie on the... What do you call this thing? Just a popper, topwater popper. That was really cool to just see Jim get that big one on a topwater. Oh, he made the perfect cast too. Yeah. And you can see these bait fish up, you know, right below the surface. And right. that's one of the benefits of waves is it breaks up those balls of bait fish. It's mm -hmm. super tough, especially for walleye to come up that high, but these smallies have no problem doing it. And so when you have those days, and again, you guys have been paying attention more to the environment than I have, but when you see something busting like that, take a chance, throw a, uh, throw a top water, and I'm just thanking God that we caught it so we can get off the lake because it's hot as Let's can be. Let's get him out here. <laughs> here to put him in there. I haven't done this in a while. It's been too busy coaching football. I don't think I set the hook it's on a lot of line out the there. middle of August. What do oh. you got? Something. You snake bottom? Nope. Unless the bottom moves. It's kind of weird to just be fishing along and not paying attention to electronics. No, I, know, isn't I it? wasn't even looking at the graph. I got to tell you, I'm missing this uh, rigging. Drifting. Always been my favorite thing until forward facing sonar came out and changed the game a little bit. But it's fun to it's fun to just get into them, whether it's too big or not doesn't really matter. But it's kind of swimming towards the boat. It's hard to tell right now. I don't think he's a giant or anything like that. But we don't want giants. We no. just want keepers. Plenty of giants on the shows this year. We just want a couple, a couple 22 inches or smaller. Even smaller would be better. It feels bigger than 22. No, nope. I'd say it's going to be right around 18, 19. Oh, that'd be great. So we're going Jason and I deer hunt together, and we do a fish fry for our farmers. And right now, we're short on uh, fillets. Oh yeah, that one just ate his last meal, Frito. <laughs> That's very awesome. Love it. What was that adjustment you were making there? Well, you know, sometimes you got to pay attention to the details. In the super clear water, sometimes you got to lengthen up your snell. So we lengthened up our snells until we got bit. 
I got bit. So we went from like a five and a half, six foot snell to a about an eight foot snell. This helps that, that bait get that much farther off the bottom. Oh, it just bleed all over. And, Might not uh, have yeah. them on my carpet. <laughs> pliers told? Wanna... Yeah. And we're not so concerned. I mean, obviously we want fish to be healthy when we release them, but we're keeping these fish. So whether he's bleeding in the boat or bleeding in the fillet shack, it's, she's bleeding. Nice keeper right there, 18 incher. Gonna eat up well. Put that one in the stew pot. And... Here we go, Tobe. Boom! That's fun. That was a nice hook set. Those rigging rods, you know, you get that 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 right action, right? That medium, yep. extra fast tip. That's a seven six, isn't it? I think you're using. Yep. Yeah, you can really lean into them, and that's key, right? With that long line and all that, we're blowing at six mile point six miles an hour, right? Light line, six pound mono on the reels with a fluorocarbon leader. It's important that you have that that feel. And what kind of rod is that, Frito? That you're using. That is a brand that Toby and I both use year round. Wolf Ambassadors for well, two brothers innovations, so they make a whole lineup of rods from the 2B Genesis series and to the Elliott series, which is what I'm using right here. I've got the seven foot three medium light fast action. So like Toby was saying, you know, when you're rigging, and which just might be one of my favorite ways to catch walleyes, that right there, that's the key to a really good Lindy rig rod, right? Is the first, you know, six to 12 inches of the rod giving you that action. Because what you can do is you, a lot of times, you know, whether you're fishing a crawler or a minnow like we are or a leech, that extra fast action tip, that extra light tip, allows you to just kind of play with the fish a little bit. Kind of going back to Murph's tip, you know, you sometimes you gotta drop the bait and let the fish kind of eat it. Well, a lot of times if you have that extra sensitive rod, you know, like this medium light extra fast action rod, just that giving that little bit extra tip, not only helps you feel the bait like we're doing right now with the chubs, but whether you're using a crawler or a leech, just gives you a little bit more play with those fish, especially when those walleyes are a little bit more finicky. And uh, sometimes you gotta have the right tool for the job. You can't build a house with a screwdriver sometimes. So when it comes to fishing, Two Brothers Innovations, Elliot's 2B Genesis, Toby's got the Identity Series. It's a heck of a series. Check them out, put it on your Christmas wish list. Here you go. Bye. Oh. That one kind of put the brakes on your toe. Oh. oh, yeah, I thought I lost it. Probably that loon. Might have a loon for you. Oh. Old one, it was really gray. I don't think this one's quite going to be a 19. Maybe a little bigger. But you're right, the importance of the feel on these rods is so important. I'm gonna go with 22 inch or free. 22? Yeah, if it's under 22, we'll keep it. I don't know. Make it a couple runs. God, it's fun. I wonder if the Vikings are winning. Oh, just a nice one. I hooked him in the out, right in the corner of the mouth. Thanks, buddy. That one looks like he's been eating uh, plump every day, all the, day. Putting on the feed that time of year. That's a beautiful fish. Not a super tanker, but one that we should probably let go. So we will. Thanks for the net job, Frito. You bet, buddy. You know, episode five, we had three musky nuts in the boat. They're all nuts, to be honest. <laughs> we got Jeff Hansky and Bob Weeks. But the more I get to know Bob, I think Bob might really seriously be sick from musky fever. But um, those guys went out on Leech Lake, which as everybody knows, Leech Lake is a fantastic musky lake. One of the best in obviously Minnesota, if not the United States. 
and you watched in that show, you witnessed how, you know, we've been talking about forward-facing sonar and obviously the, the benefits of it and the, how we use it as guides and all that kind of stuff. But I think what you saw in that show was boat control and the use of having a boat and how to use your boat and how to maneuver your boat and, you know, how Jeff was able to use his boat control to put those guys, specifically That's Bob, because Bob had the hot hand that day. So I think he went three for three. Hansky was his maverick, and he was, that guy was cold as ice, man. He's ice run through his veins. He's ice man. But um, that's where you saw Jeff was able to manipulate his boat and use it in a way to, so those guys can maximize their cast across those pieces of structure and put those baits in front of those fish more than if you were just to do a standard drift in the way Jeff was able to use his pro guide. And, and, and he's been doing it for years. I mean, that's, that's why Jeff loves that boat, and that's, that's why Jeff's a good musky fisherman is he knows how to use boat control. And, and you saw it right there. So, that, I mean, that was a great piece of that anybody can utilize and everybody can practice, you know, just proper boat control, positioning the boat, obviously with musky fishing, doing it in a way where you can hit those pieces of structure and hit it, hit it more than just one cast. They were getting multiple casts on certain pieces of the structure, the, you know, the spot on the spot. Speaking of spot on the spot, Toby's hooked up. So I'm going to go ahead, get back to that. But episode five, if you want to learn about boat control, I got this. that's one. it. Fish. Oh boy, Bob. Yep. That a baby? All right. Ready? Yep. Yeah. All right. Woo, Bob. Okay. That boy. Right. The back draw on the net. The back draw. You got pliers, Jeff? I do. Hi, y'all. Think she might be out. Okay. Yep. We're good. No, no pliers needed. Talking to anglers in the boat all the time. You know, when they're fishing on their own, one of the things I think most musky fishermen can do to improve is to fish as a team. Is to really like think about what each other is throwing. Think about how how you're working together, and Jeff really uh, really guided Tim and I here to you know with this big wind and the big waves to really focus on the boat control for us, and it paid off in a big way. Yeah. Did we get 48 and a half? Yeah. 48 and a half. All yeah. right. Woo. Chunker too. Yeah. Oh. Tub. <laughs> All right. 48 and a half or? All right, I want to get her back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. She gone. Woo! All right. Slime high five. Okay. Yeah. Going 48 and a half or? That's a beast. Tim, let's get one more and have some pancakes. <laughs> you guys got more. So I, you know that. The beauty part, you know, I go back and forth between having a windshield and having a tiller, and this is my 11th one pro guide. This boat has attributed to so many big bites on these really big windy days. It's not as fun getting there, but you put your blackfish gear on and you're fine. But once you get there, the guys up front are casting. I can back troll right down the edge of the reef, and they can get way more cast on the on the really really hot rocks you know right on the really good rocks over and over again so i can just sit here bump it in and out and they can just cast right down the edge they get so many more casts in it rather than trying to fight all these giant waves with a troller and there's times on leech where these big muskies love to bite in big wind it's just a challenge to fish but now with my big tiller <laughs> that's cool in the box so bigger small how's that go jace bigger small I don't know. We'll take them all. We'll take them all. <laughs> My favorite eater. Beauty. That might be musky bait for certain people. You know, they say they, when they, yeah, they, yeah, they always yeah, say yeah, that yeah, you put yeah, a musky yeah. in a lake, it's going to eat all the walleyes, right? I don't know about that, but um, you're absolutely right on that show. We had, let me hit spot lock here. Um, as I watched it, I was super jealous because I've been fishing muskies now on leech right and 
And uh, it seems like whenever I try to catch a muskie on that lake, something goes wrong and we don't catch them. <laughs> Obviously, I don't have the experience that, that Jeff does in that. I do have the fortunate to be fishing Leech Lake, so I agree with you. It's a fantastic lake when it comes to fishing, but I couldn't agree more with what you were saying in that. A cool, couple of cool things about that show. One, they weren't using forward-facing sonar, right? Again, they're using structure, using baits, had different baits in the boat, broke down the, the bite that day. But with that tiller and Jeff, keeping your boat on the right spot, the right cast to the fish was really the highlight for me. But of course, that first fish right away to break the ice, that was a cool bite in that show. You know, that, that show was special because Bob was on them. Like, sometimes as a fisherman, you can do no wrong. And Bob, that guy, whether he had a horseshoe or he uh, found a uh, four-leaf clover or something before uh, they went out fishing, I don't know. But Bob was on them, and he's, I tell you what, the Weeks family and... Letting Bob and Jen, the whole family, they're pretty awesome people, but uh, you want to see someone catch muskies, man. It's tough to beat Bob Weeks. So uh, piggybacking on what you said about Bob, like I agree with that. Like we we're fortunate they, they kind of fell into our lap as new owners of Agency Bay Lodge. They bought that here a few years back, and, and Bob, being a musky guide, has, has coined Agency Bay Lodge kind of the home of Leech Lake. Uh, the, the resort that caters to Leech Lake musky fishermen, and he's absolutely right with his amenities he has there. One, the pro shop, but the docks, the lifts, everything you'd want from a musky standpoint, musky fisherman standpoint, keep your boat safe, out of the water, under a lift at night, you have that opportunity there. But his pro shop he has, I mean, good God, the base that you cannot get at some of the box stores, Bob has special ordered in, and he has special Leech Lake colors. So he's a musky nut, and of course, Jen and Corey and the whole fam, you know, they're they're, they're fish heads and they've been great for us. And uh, we're super lucky to have them answering our phones when people call, but more importantly, right? Not more importantly, but as importantly, we have that, we have that spot on Leech Lake now where our musky fishermen are coming in and it's keeping us busy. And, and because of our network, a guide group, we seem to be on the bite more than not. This year, I think Bob and I were talking, we had just last week, Bob, between Bob's boat and my boat, we had, he got our like hundredth musky in the boat last week. That's pretty between cool. Between two boats. I mean, that's for guiding, that's fantastic. Come on up to Agency Bay and share a few casts, right? That's right. <laughs> Chow to bucktail. Yeah, beautiful fish. <laughs> Number 40, three? 41, 42 incher, third one of the day. Yeah, and a good leaper. So, yeah, this little, you know, we talked about uh, bucktails earlier and we don't have quite as much wind now, so we've downsized. And um, yeah, it's paying off. <laughs> You're All out right. of breath, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna gotcha. get her back. We're out here today, and we've got this Maluna unhinged cooler, made in the USA, made right here in Minnesota, and this thing is absolutely amazing. Last thing we want to worry about in the morning is making sure that we have enough ice in the boat. We know that when we fill up our Maluna on the start of the week, that towards the end of the week, we're still gonna have cold ice inside of there. Oversized handles, they're lightweight, easy to haul around, plenty of room, and these things are top notch. You want a cooler that'll keep ice for several days on end? These Maluna unhinged are where it's at. Family Outdoor Outfitters is the number one ice fishing headquarters. We have everything you need from today's firearms to the latest fishing electronics and the hottest footwear and outdoor apparel. We only carry the best brands at the best prices. Have a question? No problem. We have the most knowledgeable team in the business ready to answer your call personally seven days a week. Whether you're visiting us in Walker, Minnesota or touching your screen with our state-of-the-art distribution center, we can get you gear when you need it fast. Cast or blast? Reeds has the best service, best advice and best price guaranteed. Does it? Uh, no. 
Oh, 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 it's run toward this boat. Now, it's run toward the boat. No, that's a gator. Oh, that's a, uh, another species. One of them speckled walleyes. Another minus 50. Minus dollar 50. 50. Down to three bucks. Not only walleyes, but uh, pike are putting on the feed bag also. You spear him this winter. Yeah, we'll put him back. <laughs> Murph would be all over that with a spear. <laughs> hey, hook sets are all fun. Yeah, smells. Everyone. Smells good. Smells, got the old clam gum gloves all full of pikey slime now. Just warm your hands clam up. net. Get the slime off it. <laughs> Got all excited there for a minute. Hold on, we're gonna need it. Hold on. Oh. Yep. I'm gonna move this out of the way. You're talking about your Elliot. This is an identity. This is kind of their upper end rods. Not something I have in my boat much for clients, but man, are these nice rods. A little eater. That's what we want. If we can get him in here. Oh, extreme net man for rule. the save. Was that a kick save or a glove save? <laughs> Perfect. It's the a multi-species, yeah, you know. The last two minutes, it's been a multi-species mecca here. You know, Jason, you weren't part of our our show this year. Maybe it was on purpose I, on my part. I because, think it was you strategic. Know, you typically will show up and somehow end up on the winning team. So we purposely scheduled it during football camp this year so that when you're talking about multi-species, we're going into shows six and seven this year. We had the Guide Wars that just aired, you know, catching walleyes, not like this. We were looking for big walleyes with big bass, big smallies, perch, everything else. I'm gonna put this one in the box. Another, another one for the farmers. Um, but that show was fantastic this year. We had we had a windy day, so Leech Lake fished really small. But uh, my favorite part is we picked one really small part of the lake and stuck into it, and that was a lot of fun. But as you saw this, saw this show, we did a lot of things outside of fishing that were fun. Well, say if, if you ever want golf lessons, don't call. <laughs> don't call our 855 number. Well, for Bob golf Weeks lessons. is a pro golfer, well, so Bob okay, was Bob, pretty yeah. good. Yeah, he was good. Uh, I don't think uh, Justin or myself or Anybody else, uh, probably Jip, definitely not Ernster. Uh, you don't no. want those guys helping with your golf tips. But. No. I think the fun thing about Guide Wars is it's all about camaraderie and, and competition because everybody's so competitive. But you look at our guide team, it's about being together, taking a little break from the, the guide grind. Yeah. Like, that is a guide season, coming together and uh, just showing camaraderie, you know, breaking bread, competing a little bit, doing a little golf, and uh, more importantly, just taking a break from uh, the day-to-day -day guide grind that goes on every single day. You know, the the beginning we had to cast you know to get the get in the uh, hula hoop or whatever it was the swim the swim yep, floaty yep. and and that was a lot of fun we had a fish cleaning competition we golfed uh that's just a great part of that show but ultimately for me the favorite catch is the guy that's filming right now behind uh forward facing sonar a little bit but we uh we use the back one and we could see this big fish and and uh we'd said this year that the, that our cameramen can be part of the team, which they are, a huge part of our team. Thank you, Joe and Rockfish. But uh, yeah, a couple casts, two, three casts, back of the boat, we saw this big fish. We were trying to catch a smallmouth, and of course he jerked some muskies, so yeah. gotta love that. Got a little situation, Joe, uh, Hooked up with a musky. When you get him, you got him. Nice. <laughs> Forty incher on the board, baby. Medusa. Medusa. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Whoever made Some? these teams is a genius because like Team face. Glass is on the Some. board. This is a good deal. Yeah, we're just kind of tucking out of the wind. So far, we haven't used much gas other than getting here. We still haven't caught a bass in a rocky. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful fish Let's right go. there. Wow, nice, yeah. nice fish, Joe. Boom. Love it. All right, let's get a quick measurement. 
oh. is that we have a network of people, whether we're on Leech Lake or you're on Vermilion, or we have four or five guys in the Gull Lake, Brainerd area. You know, we get on a lake, we have a network. So, you know, somebody might be 10 miles away on the same body of water, bites going on, we can move, dif different things going on. And that's kind of what happened, you know, with the Guide Wars, is we got together and we used dif different information. Just Justin Cromie's in my boat, he's never been on leech before, yep. not this year anyways. Yep. And he gets in the boat, we're catching fish. And, and uh, just talk about our guide group, Jason, this year, as a group of where we've been, where we started the year, and where we are now at the end of the year. Well, you know, I mean, that's the, that's the fun thing about it. I mean, we real cohesive group that works super well together and and even though we are spread out you know that's the the thing you know and obviously with the use of technology and cell phones and we're able to connect but i think that's you know what's unique about our group is like i said how close we are but yet we're still spread out but yet we still stay intact and you know toby and i we don't get to hang out as much as we'd like we like but we still find time to do that but i think that's really what makes us who we are is we're, we're good friends and we look out for each other. We take care of one another, and uh, brothers. Exactly, exactly. And it's uh, we always say it, it's a team, but maybe it's more so a brotherhood. Yeah, absolutely. And and who knows what the future is going to be? But um, you know, I don't think our group that we have now, our core group, are going anywhere. Yep. Um, nobody. Everybody wears the same jersey, as we say. We're athlete or coach. Yep. You know, and and uh, yeah, we're lucky to have the group we have. It changes a little bit here and there. You know, it changed a little bit this year, and who knows who our next guide's going to be. Exactly. You know, maybe it's one of you that are watching. We'd love to have you, you know, but it's, it's a guide group, and we not only share information on the water, but it's a brotherhood. Yep. And that's what we love about this, the Leisure Outdoor Adventures. Yep, 100%. Got one, Tobe? I got one. Nice. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a bass or something. Talked about how we are uh, multi-species guys. Multi-species, so are going to jump? Oh, it's kind of staying down. I don't know what it is, but looks like another walligator right over on this side, buddy. Yep. Another one for the box, I think. Oh, that's a nice one. Listen to the Vikings game. Sounds good much better than that. Reminiscing on our guide group. Got her? Almost. Oh, deep nets, those clam nets. Spunky. Yeah. Nice one. I know you got a football meeting. We're going to have to probably wrap this up here, but kind of like we're wrapping up our season. You know, we had our guide life, literally. You up in Vermilion. Yep. Me on Leech for most of the, most of the uh, summer. Our guide life show. Yep. The Guide Wars. Probably my favorite show again. And then we're, uh, we're wrapping up with our last episode here, just kind of reminiscing on the year and doing something that we don't do very much of. We don't get to fish very much together, do we? That and just live bait rigging. Yeah, yeah. Going around using 2D, finding this fish, lengthening our snells, big minnows, fall of the year, they're trying to fatten up, and just rigging. It can still be done. That's the best part about it. Anybody can go out and do this. You don't have to have fancy technology to go do this. No, absolutely not. And you get a beautiful day. You know, the, the, you don't have to get up super early because the water's cold and fish are cold-blooded, so they seem to get active in the fall, in the middle of the day, whether you're musky fishing or walleye fishing, and, and just getting out there and finding those deep deep break lines and jigging, drifting with the jig, maybe even shallow if it's Leech Lake, but we're on a yep. lake where the fish happen to migrate a little deeper, and, and uh, time to stockpile a little bit. This one's gonna get kept, and uh, put this one back, put this one in the live well, and, and um, you know, kind of put a wrap on today and, and the show, and, We'll go load up the boat and maybe we'll talk a little bit about what's coming next year. That'd be great. Best part is the Vikes are winning. They are winning. For now at least. Knock on wood, you never know. Beautiful day, Vikings won. Wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty, but with a football guy here. Defense, uh, hey, defense wins championships. Yeah, I wouldn't say our fishing was pretty either, but we got, we are done. We had, the wind picked up, you know, and it was yep. typical fall fishing, but we were layered up, right? Yep, all thanks our, to Blackfish. We got all our Blackfish stuff on, got layered, layers stayed here. warm. You, hey, I even got the Vikes sweatshirt on. Why Maybe that's why we won. Uh, big fiberglass Lund boat in the wind. Kept us on the fish. 2D sonar, rigging walleyes, old school. Uh, something that I've always loved to do and something that I really built my fishing career on was my ability to live bait rig, but kind of stepped away from that uh, in the last few years with all the forward facing sonar stuff. But today we just brought out the big minnows, rigged rods, rigged our rods with Lindy rigs and uh, deep breaks, typical fall fishing, big minnows. Nice walleyes, uh, no super giants. No super giants, but that's what keeps you coming back and fishing. Just a great day on the water with friends and you can't beat fall fishing. And now we're gonna to transition to deer hunting. Killing season. 
Yep. And from this is probably the last time I'll be on the water this year, you too, I'm assuming. Probably, yeah. I don't know if I'll have to get my boat winterized here and wrap up the season. And the guy, I still got a lot of football to coach, so I don't know how much time I have to fish. Well, or we have a great group of guides. Our two, two hard-nosed fishermen still are Chuck Hassey and Justin Cromie are yep. out there still doing trips, uh, doing trips on Leech Lake and and uh, up through up through uh, I think the twenty second. Chuck said he was going to pull the plug, and Justin yep. maybe right around there a little bit later too. But uh, what a great year from a guiding standpoint, the guide life standpoint. You know, we just kind of recapped that today. Um, this being the last show, looking forward to next year. But uh, from all of our guys, you know, with with our group, um, you know, Jeff Anderson, Justin Cromie, Bob Weeks, Tim Hansky, Jim Ernster, Nick Miltimore, Jeremiah Pipcorn. Um, Jim, yeah, we said Ernst. Chuck Hassey, Chuck. Jim Borgstrom, yourself, myself. Uh, we, pretty we good. Got pretty good group. Who did we forget? I don't think we. I don't I think, think we. we I think we got it. I don't know how I managed that, but we got them all, yeah. and we all got on the show at some point, and, and and did a lot of different things. We bass fished. We musky fished. Uh, we did a lot of different things fishing on Leech Lake a few times off of Leech Lake, like today. Uh, but the guide life was a very very much success, and we couldn't do that without it's amazing, an amazing support group, which is who? We got an awesome group of sponsors. Um, we mentioned Agency Bay Lodge today. They obviously, they played a big role with Bob and Jen. And I mean, we couldn't have the guide life and our guide service without people answering the phones and emails and Bob and Jen and do a great job with Agency Bay Lodge. Uh, in June, every year, we host the Ultimate Fishing Camp, which is something last year was our uh, eighth year. Next year will be our ninth. We hold it at the end of June every year, and uh, we'll be taking registrations for that soon but we had two really big sponsors who helped not only the guide life but also the fish camp and uh, reed sporting goods and trappers landing lodge so we want to make sure we give them a big shout out maluna coolers all year long keep our customers happy with cold beverages and live bait live bait snacks uh mike's tree company they do an awesome job here in the brain lakes area nick miltimore is one of our guides he works for mike's tree yeah obviously today the blackfish gear Clam nets. Scooping walleyes and muskies all summer long yep. with, the, with the clam nets. Your, your good buddy, Zach Christensen. Zach Christensen, North Edge Exterior. Yep, absolutely. Swanson's Bait and Tackle. We make sure we always stop in there and see Chris and Caleb, and uh, they take good care of us there. And It's really important that we, we give those shout-outs, but... Without them, without their sponsoring, you know, we're not we're not taking the time to do things above and beyond your typical social media posts with our phone, right? Right yep. now we have a professional company that uh, that does a really good job with, well, phenomenal job with cinematography, uh, making us look good uh, and kind of keep us on track when we're trying to fish as far as catching what we're supposed to be catching and, and whatnot. Well, and so, speaking of fish, we can't do it without Ray Sport Marine. Ray Sport Marine, absolutely a huge sponsor of ours. And we were hoping to get actually Dave Hernisman out on the boat this year. Uh, didn't didn't work out as one of our sponsors. And I think next year, you know, we're looking for ideas for, for shows. For sure. We'll talk about that. But uh, we wanted to get him in the in the in the boat this year to talk about their new stores. There's a new one in Bemidji. Yep. They have a fleet of stores around the upper Midwest and we're obviously located uh, LOA country. They surround us. And so whenever we have an issue, they did an amazing job with their service departments getting us into what anything, anytime there's a problem. And when you put the hours yep. on that we do, occasionally we have those issues. Uh, but from ordering boats on a yearly basis to rigging boats on a yearly basis to keeping us on the water, and giving us everything we need for, for support. Uh, Ray Sport Marine, phenomenal, phenomenal uh, dealership and an amazing sponsor of Leisure Outdoors. So yeah, no, I think what's really important as we go in the kids killing season now, so as we yep. transition here, um, we, we wanna hear from you guys. We wanna know, I mean, we're going on. I think this was our fifth year as Guide Life, I think. Yeah, I think I so, yeah. yep. so as we transition now, we wanna hear from our, our fans and our, our customers. You wouldn't be amazed, Toby, how many times I talk to people who who fish with us and who say they watch the guide life and how it gives them a glimpse into us as fishermen and people. Yep. And, and so we want to hear from, from you, our, our social media followers, our YouTube followers, our customers. Like, what do you want to hear? Do you want more fishing content? Do you want to see the funny stuff? Do you want to tips, tricks, whatever? We're, we're willing to make it happen. And obviously when you got a company like Raw Fish behind the uh, camera, making the magic happen, we can do a lot of really good things. So comment on this YouTube channel. Comment, what are some ideas that you have for us, our viewers, uh, as a show next year? What would you like us to see? Something different, different location. Obviously, we're in our, in our guide area. We like to keep it in there because it helps us promote our guide yep. service. But um, something different, maybe. Uh, we're open. We have guys that fish everything. Um, so we can certainly try to create a show with that. 
Um, any ideas? We're always looking for those. Uh, we're where we pay attention to what people say. So uh, to close our show, we'd like to answer some questions social media wise. And one of the questions that was asked for this show was with forward facing sonar, which we tried to stay away from today. I would say we kind of cheated a time or two. I did use the forward facing sonar just to see where the fish were yep. on a structure so we could live bait rig over them. Uh, but it wasn't, that wasn't like bobber fishing or anything like that today. But, but uh, with forward facing sonar and the catch rates or the fishing, you know, the, the perception is people are catching more fish because of forward facing sonar, which, um, you know, undoubtedly people probably are once they figure it out. Um, what should we do about limits? That's a great question. And I think it comes down to, obviously we all have our legal means when it comes to keeping fish. And I think as we evolve into the future, you know, I myself, I find myself keeping less fish but maybe that's because I don't want to clean fish all the time. Right. When you clean six, seven hundred a year, you don't yeah. necessarily want to get your knife dirty. You again. know, I, I just think it's us as anglers and as we move into the future and, you know, being conservationist and understanding we, you keep what you need. And and as we move forward, I mean, I think the evolution of forward facing sonar and has really evolved in the ice fishing world. Yep. And especially with your panfish and such. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I think ultimately, like it, it always comes down to the fishermen. And obviously everybody has the right to keep their own fish and, and everything. But I think, you know, if we want to continue to have bountiful resources, you know, it's just uh, being really stewards of our, of our lakes and our conservation and, and uh, keeping what you need and sometimes throwing the rest back. That is a football coach giving you an answer. That's he coach deviated. Right he deviated. Coach he never talk. came up with an answer. Notice Jason Fried never gave his opinion no. on that other than to be a steward of the resource. I will be the opposite of that. And I will say that on Leech Lake, we can only keep four walleyes. Uh, one can be over 20 inches. On Vermilion, you can keep four walleyes. Uh, there's other lakes around here that, that you can keep four. And of course, statewide regulations here in Minnesota is you can keep six. Your daily and your possession limit is six walleyes. I believe for walleyes per se, that four is enough. I don't think you need to keep more than four. Could you have more than four in possession? Maybe you could have six in possession, but as far as your daily limit goes, four is plenty. Um, I know for myself, two good walleyes, that's four fillets. Yep. That's plenty with uh, Lots of fixings, you know, but uh, that's enough. And you do short lunch and you probably, oh, yeah. you know, one or two fish per people. That's mm -hmm. that's plenty for a meal. Um, so I think four, I think more importantly is is the panfish. You know, the, the crappies, the bluegills. I shouldn't say more importantly, but they are really susceptible to over harvest in winter and, and, and in, the, in the fall when they get in the deep holes. So conservation, I think I think we see now we see Limits Gilbert Lake by my house, five crappies, that's it. Yep. And the, the population's growing and the fish are getting bigger and it's certainly helped. Um, and uh, I think reduced limits is okay. I think with technology, people are gonna get out, they're gonna catch more fish, they're gonna have fun and still be able to bring enough home. I don't think we need to overfill the freezer Four fish is enough for walleyes, five is plenty for crappies and panfish. 100%. So with that, that, that with that, um, I, I think I think it's a wrap. Again, I'm, on behalf of us, Jason Free and Toby Cavalli Vog, and all our crew, uh, um, did we mention Jeff? Did we leave Jeff Anderson? I did say Jeff Anderson, He sorry. might be living up in the, <laughs> the Canadian woods. Well, I know, now. but I know. my partner in Leisure Outdoor Adventures has ownership is Jeff Anderson. And, and um, for Jeff and I, uh, and the rest of our guides. We would like to thank everybody for watching. Please, please promote our, or support our sponsors and help us keep to doing this and bringing, this, bringing these shows to you on an annual basis. And we're looking forward to 2024, looking for your ideas. With that, Jason, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Leisure Outdoor Adventures would like to thank all their sponsors for their support in making the guide life happen.